I'll uh, now get into some basics uh, so that we address the topic of our discussion, bring out the difference between uh, Alzheimer's and FTD. Dr. Grossman, you mentioned that FTD is much uh, less in number when compared to Alzheimer's. Uh, but just to get to the most basic level, can you please explain in layman terms for our audience, what is neurodegeneration and uh, what is dementia? Well, Priya, that's a great question. Um, uh, neurodegeneration um, is, uh, reflects the fact that uh, there are uh, misfolded proteins that are accumulating in, in our brains. Uh, all of our brain cells or neurons uh, depend on the functioning of proteins. And uh, under some circumstances, these proteins can become misfolded. And when they become misfolded, they can no longer perform their essential function. And uh, depending on where in the brain this process is occurring, uh, then we'll see different kinds of symptoms. So if there are proteins accumulating in the, that are misfolded and that are accumulating in the part of the brain that are important for language, that will result in some difficulty with language functioning. If there are um, proteins that are becoming misfolded and accumulating in the memory part of the brain, that will result in some difficulty with memory. Um, if there are proteins that are accumulating in, um, uh, that are becoming misfolded and accumulating in um, parts of the brain that are important for planning and organizing, then that will um, cause some difficulty with dual tasking and executive functioning. So uh, neurodegeneration is when misfolded proteins accumulate in a particular part of the brain, and as these misfolded proteins accumulate, they cause difficulties with uh, uh, various kinds of symptoms. The, uh, uh, the symptoms worsen with time, and this is due to the fact that the proteins continue to accumulate. They, it's unlike a stroke where there's a, just one sudden event that occurs. Instead, the misfolded proteins gradually accumulate, and as they gradually accumulate, there's a worsening of the symptoms. And the dementia refers to the progressive cognitive change that occurs as these misfolded proteins accumulate in the in the brain. And there's the um, common misconception that dementia refers only to memory, uh, and in fact, that that's uh, memory is the first symptom that is um, evident in many of folks with Alzheimer's disease, and Alzheimer's disease, as uh, Dr. Bulk mentioned, is uh, the most common form of dementia. But there are other forms of uh, dementia that can affect primarily language, and we refer to, the, to these as progressive aphasia. Aphasia is um, a disorder of language, and progressive means that the language is worsening, and uh, this is due to the fact that misfolded proteins are accumulating in language parts of the brain. There are also um, syndromes where uh, there can be uh, difficulty with visual spatial functioning, where people have difficulty um, reaching for objects even though they're right in front of them on a table and have difficulties with other um, visually mediated tasks. This isn't a form of blindness, but this is instead difficulty being able to understand where um, objects and things are in space. There can also be um, uh, conditions that affect our personality and our behavior. Now, uh, we refer to these as the behavioral variant of frontotemporal degeneration, and all of these are different forms of dementia. Uh, the language problems can occur without memory difficulty. The, the visual spatial problems can occur without memory difficulty, and the social problems can occur without memory difficulty. Over time, uh, certainly uh, if one begins with a certain kind of problem, th there can be uh, additional involvement of other cognitive domains. So somebody who begins with a language uh, problem, some of those folks can go on to develop some memory difficulty as well. Uh, and this is the, the progressive nature of, uh, of dementia. Thank you, Dr. Grossman. So um, as I understand, prote accumulation of proteins in the frontotemporal lobes of the brain ca causes frontotemporal dementia. Uh, 
Correct. And the frontal yeah. and the temporal parts of the brain are important for uh, specific kinds of um, difficulties that we see in FTD. Uh, the, about half of the folks with FTD have a form of language difficulty that's called progressive aphasia, and this is because the language parts of the brain are in the frontal and temporal parts of the brain. There are different forms of progressive aphasia, and we um, try to be very careful about studying these different forms of progressive aphasia because each of these is a marker for a different kind of protein that is accumulating in a different part of the language network of the brain. So um, one kind of uh, progressive aphasia can affect primarily difficulty understanding the meanings of words and difficulty understanding objects. We refer to this as a deficit in semantics or deficit in meaning, and this is related to disease that's accumulating in the temporal part of the language network of the brain, and the protein that accumulates in the temporal lobe uh, is a protein that's called TDP. Uh, by comparison, the uh, another protein will accumulate in the frontal parts of the brain and cause the very um, effortful and non-fluent speech. And the protein that accumulates in the frontal part of the brain is called is the tau protein that I had mentioned earlier. Yes. Uh, Dr. Walk, um, uh, what are some of the initial uh, presentations of Alzheimer's? Yeah, so I think... Um, uh, you know, um, Dr. Grossman laid out really nicely what you see um, in frontotemporal um, degeneration, and I think that the theme that um, he mentions is this idea that where there is um, the pathology of the disease or that these proteins that build up in the disease, that causes injury to um, the nerve cells or neurons, which are the sort of information-carrying cells of the brain, and um, that affects um, the cognitive function that's observed by um, the region that's affected. And so Alzheimer's disease, at least um, for one of the proteins that's really even more related to where there's injury in the brain than amyloid, actually, the tangles that uh, Dr. Grossman alluded to earlier that are made up of this tau protein, they tend to begin in the, the part of the brain that's involved in memory, a, a part of the brain that uh, some people know of, um, which is called the hippocampus. Um, but that's the part of the brain that um, is most important for holding on to um, memories and experiences in, in your life. And that's what tends to be injured earliest in Alzheimer's disease. And so memory loss tends to be one of the leading features of the disease. And the kind of memory loss that people have is um, what some people um, will refer to as short-term memory, where you'll have trouble remembering something from a conversation earlier in the day or perhaps uh, aspects of a movie you saw um, the day before um, or, uh, you know, plans that you have um, for later in the day. The problem is, um, as we're moving to trying to detect the disease as early as possible, a lot of those kinds of memory symptoms are things that normal older adults have all the time, and actually even young adults have to some extent as well. And so one of the things that, you know, our group in the Memory Center and others are working on is to how to differentiate when those memory symptoms reflect something more um, serious versus when they're just part of um, normal aging. The, the other thing I guess I would say that we've learned uh, quite a bit about with Alzheimer's disease um, is that while we like to think of it as this sort of typical disease that tends to affect memory and then maybe a little bit later you have some language and visual spatial function issues and then maybe attention and your kind of ability to organize your thinking are, are affected, turns out um, that there's a lot more heterogeneity that, that um, while generally people start off with memory, sometimes they can start off with other symptoms as well or have a different balance of symptoms. And so um, one of the real challenges in, in the field is to um, be able to correctly classify those people who have a less than typical presentation of Alzheimer's disease and differentiate them from conditions like frontotemporal dementia and, and other forms of 
of dementia uh, as well. But again, the, the sort of typical course is of um, subtle to increasing amounts of, of memory loss over time as um, one of the, the most salient features. Thank you, Dr. Walk. Uh, Dr. Grossman, um, I, you know you mentioned uh, progressive aphasia. Um, and what are some of the diagnostic, diagnostic tests that uh, we use for uh, 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 FTD and uh, what are some of the treatments that are followed? Well, the most important initial test is a um, clinical examination by an expert in the area. Uh, so uh, uh, trying to find someone who has experience with uh, seeing patients who have progressive aphasia or FTD or uh, uh, we're very lucky at Penn because we have experts in memory and the various uh, variations of memory difficulty that can occur in Alzheimer's disease with uh, Dr. Wolk and his, uh, and his colleagues. So being seen first by uh, an experienced individual, experienced neurologist who has uh, uh, seen lots of individuals is a great way to begin the diagnostic process. Once uh, a, a, um, a clinical evaluation has been performed, then uh, uh, the next step is to try to see whether there is a uh, difficulty in a particular part of the brain that is associated with the kinds of difficulties that are uh, being seen clinically. And uh, a widely available tool to do that is an MRI scan of the brain. And so the oftentimes uh, uh, an initial step will be uh, getting an MRI scan to see if there's a correspondence between the clinical difficulties that are seen and the uh, looking to make sure that there are uh, uh, that there are no injuries in the uh, part of the brain that uh, corresponds to the difficulties that the clinician is seeing. Uh, what kinds of things can occur? Uh, uh, many things can mimic uh, progressive aphasia or can mimic memory difficulty. For example, there could be a tumor in the brain or there could be inflammation that is gradually slowing down functioning of the part of the brain or there could be an infection that is compromising brain functioning. So an MRI scan will help rule out all of these various conditions that can mimic uh, 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 a neurodegenerative condition. And there are also some system, um, systemic conditions that can mimic um, dementia, and so there are some blood tests that are important to obtain to make sure that there's no systemic condition that could be mimicking um, dementia. The next step after this is uh, involves um, um, uh, being seen at a specialty um, uh, center like um, uh, University of Pennsylvania, where we would try to obtain speci specific studies that determine the particular kind of protein that is uh, accumulating in the brain and is associated with the difficulties that uh, patients are experiencing. Uh, Dr. Wolk alluded to uh, PET scans. Uh, there are many different kinds of PET scans, and the kind of PET scan that uh, he alluded to was, is a molecular PET scan that specifically takes a picture of the um, beta amyloid protein that can accumulate in the brain and is associated with um, Alzheimer's disease. We're very fortunate at Penn. We're also able to uh, use a kind of PET scan that can make a picture of the tau protein that's accumulated in the uh, in the brain. This is a research procedure that is not yet uh, widely available, and we're lucky that we um, um, can take advantage of that here at Penn. Other ways that we try to uh, measure uh, the proteins that are accumulating in the brain and that are causing difficulties are uh, through a lumbar puncture where we um, uh, analyze the fluid that bathes the brain and the spinal cord. Our brains make half a liter of cerebrospinal fluid every day. We make lots and lots of this. It's used to act as a cushion between the brain and the inner surface of the skull. So when we're nodding our heads, we don't um, knock ourselves out. We take a small sample of this fluid, and we can measure the levels of the proteins that we've been discussing, the tau protein and the amyloid protein. Uh, 
And uh, uh, as our research progresses, we're able to um, look at these same proteins in blood tests as well. And so that work uh, is um, not quite ready yet for clinical use, but is certainly advancing. The value of determining the specific proteins that are accumulating in the brain is that this helps determine whether somebody is eligible for a treatment trial. The treatment trials that Dr. Wilk and I have been discussing are disease-modifying treatment trials where we are trying to target the specific kind of protein that is uh, uh, accumulating the brain and clogging up the brain cells. And the only way that we can do that effectively is by knowing the, the specific protein that is involved in the memory difficulty or the language difficulty or the uh, social and behavioral difficulties that we see in our patients. Uh, thank you, Dr. Grossman. Dr. Walk, uh, do you have anything to add to uh, Dr. Grossman's uh, observations? Um, I, I would um, just say, first of all, I mean, I, I think everything Dr. Grossman said are things that um, we consider as well when we see patients with Alzheimer's, in part, you know, because we're trying to differentiate um, Alzheimer's disease from some of the conditions that Dr. Grossman is also trying to um, examine as well. I think another sort of diagnostic tool we have, particularly as we're seeing patients um, who have much more mild symptoms, something uh, that we sometimes refer to as mild cognitive impairment, is time that we, we follow patients over time and, and um, measure whether or not they're showing any evidence of um, progression in their condition. And um, that also is, I think, a, a useful tool that sometimes we, we don't have a definitive answer the first time we see a patient, but the evolution um, can help us uh, as well. 